I just wanted to take some time to talk about how to use the filter for a nuclear event and we'll basically be talking a nuclear attack event. But these are the things you need to, to think of when uh, this occurs and actually you need to think about it before it occurs because you need to have the, the systems so that you can get them set up quickly. Um, first off, uh, during a nuclear attack, your uh, preparation actions are determine where your bunker is going to be, your requirements and supplies. For a, an attack, an immediate action is duck and cover. Getting This is uh, going to help you um, protect yourself and loved ones for, from flying debris and the things that come along with the actual blast. Follow-up action is get to your bunker and set up the bunker. And this has to be uh, thought of ahead of time because you need to determine where the bunker should be based on what you have. And this is a very generic uh, type drawing that I've got. And you'll have to determine where you will be uh, actually bunkering. For any uh, radiation issue, uh, for radiation protection, the three things you got to think of is time, distance, and shielding. The, the less time you have in contact with the radioactive source, the less dose you'll get. Uh, the farther you can put yourself from the source uh, in distance uh, will reduce your exposure. And if you have shielding, uh, basically you need mass for gamma rays. Uh, alpha and beta can be stopped with pretty, with uh, like a car, uh, coveralls or something like that and uh, uh, air filtrate or a gas mask. But for shielding uh, gamma rays, you need some mass. You need dirt, lead, water, and uh, quite a bit of it to reduce it. So the place for your bunker is going to be the best place is low in the house preferably underground and away from outside walls now that's not always going to be possible because you still got to think of the things you need to actually take care of for the, the week or so that you're going to be in there so you got to look at bathrooms food water those things to best fit the uh, needs of your family so basically you're air filter system that uh, we looked at goes outside the house. It can be in a garage or whatever, but if you have it indoors anywhere, it's gonna suck contamination in. So it's uh, probably better to have it outside. If you can have it covered, that's that's fine. And then the, fil the discharge goes to your bunker and that's where all your makeup air is uh, brought in. Uh, if you can, um, you want to seal your bunker with uh, like plastic, all your inlets. So everything that goes into the bunker, you need to control. And when you bring the air in, it needs to come through the filter. So you also have to look at, um, here is an above the bunker look. You'll need a change area because you may be having to go out into the house and you may need to uh, remove your clothes and get uh, decontaminated as best you can. And this can be just simply as like a, a alcove that comes into the bunker where you take all your uh, clothes off or outer garments and then you uh, reduce the amount of contamination you bring in the bu bunker. So for your bunker, it needs to be as airtight as possible. So you wanna uh, seal up like outlets, windows, uh, switches, anything in the wall if, that you're not putting, uh, that go transfers air from outside. Uh, any ventilation in the house needs to be turned off so that you're not sucking air in unless it's a, just a recirc and you can control that. But basically you're gonna be turning off your, what which you may not have any power anyway. For the, uh, so you want it as airtight as possible. 
if you're inside, the sheeting can be very thin, like the painter's uh, plastic. Uh, it doesn't take, it's not heavy. You can use some lighter weight tape. So you wanna put that up and determine that ahead of time. So how you're gonna do it. So you look at your area, your room, you determine any uh, openings that can communicate with the outside and then you seal those up as best you can. The uh, filter flow path, uh, the suction, so wherever you're, so if you have to use a blower in here, which is probably likely or uh, bellows, a manual bellows, this line has to be airtight to the suction of that. Otherwise you'll be sucking contaminated air in. Uh, if you have a, lucky enough to have a filter with power uh, and a blower, then it has to be uh, just at that uh, filter. But typically you want to have your line come into the bunker airtight. So when you suck air in uh, through a me mechanical means, you're not gonna be sucking contaminated air in. Uh, the uh, different blowers that you can have, you can if you've got 120 or 240, depending on where you're at, uh, you can use uh, a blower motor and that's AC. You could use a 12 volt DC blower if you got batteries and a 12 volt, 12 volt power supply, but then you have to be able to re, um, uh, to be able to um, charge that. And then the, of course, probably what you're gonna need is a, some kind of a mechanical bellows device where you can pump the air in under control. It's better if you have a positive pressure in there, but with a mechanical bellows, you're probably just gonna be able to have a static. But the key is, is when you bring air in, you do it through the filter. The bunker location should be as far from the outside wall as possible. Again, this depends on your house. You may be up against the outside wall and not have a lot of choices and still be able to uh, survive in there for a while. Should be as low as possible. Underground's better, but again, like if you live in an area where they don't have basements like around the coast, then you're just gonna have to do it on the ground floor and get inside as far as you can. Uh, and it needs to already contain all your ivy. If you're starting to bring everything in when the event happens, you're kind of behind the eight ball. So basically your area should have all the essentials, water, food, uh, waste management like bathrooms or have a plan on how to, that you're gonna uh, be able to go to the bathroom or something um, or take care of that uh, during the event where you might have to leave your bunker but have a plan on going out and coming back or have a bucket in your bunker and just uh, be able to empty it or whatever. So anyway, that really I wanted to show how the filter system would work and the key is is having that filter in an area that uh, you're going to be um, drawing air in and you don't want to draw it in your house if you don't have to you can but then you have you have a risk of sucking contamination in and then having that uh, discharge to your bunker as airtight as possible also with the uh, necessary means of moving that air anyway hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of how the filter system would work and again um, if you have, even if you don't have a filter, if you can isolate your bunker as best you can and uh, then control the air uh, from like within the house first and then uh, that will help also. But um, just wanted to put this out and hopefully you guys will be able to utilize this to make a plan for your own family. You guys have a blessed day. Thank you.